Thank you, everyone. I know everyone's super busy. Uh, I had gotten, uh, well, I was asked by uh, Tiffany Wilson, who is a, a classmate and good friend from Georgetown Business School uh, to share a little bit about heart math. And, uh, you know, it was something initially that I, I knew nothing about. And what, what it's kind of morphed into is I ended up becoming certified in it. Uh, and use it kind of regularly to drive my own kind of human experience. So really to drive resilience by getting into coherence by using the heart meth techniques. And so um, I have a handful of slides, but given that we have a pretty manageable group here, I mean, if you have questions, um, either raise your hand or um, can they do questions on Zoom? Type them in. Yeah, sure. If um, anybody puts a question in the chat, um, I can read them out to you, or if you get notified of them too, feel free to answer. Um, okay, cool. so I'm like, yeah, pretty flexible um, and would love for this to be a dynamic conversation. Um, the goals for this session for me to you all is to do a couple of things. One, to help you understand like, what is this? Uh, and then also to kind of walk away and be a little bit more curious about it. Um, what it is, uh, maybe practice it. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna give a kind of a brief, brief background about myself, and then I'll go through kind of the meat of the presentation, which is some background on heart math, some examples of the data from a scientific standpoint of the results that they've been seeing, and they've started to aggregate in kind of a metadata format, um, walk through some of, you know, some real life experiences, and then do uh, practice with the group, um, kind of one heart math tool called inner ease. Um, and so um, that's really my goal. So as we, as we walk away from it, I think one of the things that the reason I did it, like, you know, I guess I would paint myself as somebody that probably never would have gotten into this um, really at all. And it, can, it gets a little woo woo, but the, the math, you know, I was an industrial engineer and now I do finance and private equity. Um, you know, our energy is so important. Um, we can, you know, get triggered with family, your significant other, work, uh, um, traffic. And so what I, what I found by doing this, and it doesn't take a lot of time, is um, it just really helps my like moment to moment experience. And so the more you are aware of your energy and you practice some of these tools um, and I'll go over and I'll share, um, you know, kind of how I do it and when I do it, um, but feel free to ask any questions. I'm certainly a human being that um, is far from perfect and I've had probably multiple transformative moments in my life. And so, you know, charging the world and everyone's trying to, you know, raise money or do this and social media, like, you know, all that, I guess, is interesting to me. But I think, you know, if we're really focused on, you know, being our best selves and changing the world or, or the experience for your kids or your significant other or work, um, I've gotten a tremendous amount of value from this. So um, again, my name is Rob Swanson. I think on Zoom, it says Roberto. Um, and the reason it says that is um, I do some things in Latin America um, and they all call me Roberto. So that, that is my affectionate Zoom name. Um, the way I got engaged in heart math is I had a client. So years ago, um, I founded and, and started a strategy consulting firm where we service Fortune 500 companies. And um, we had a, a, a mutual client, a friend of mine that ran a sports marketing firm. And this client introduced me to my friend. And my friend kind of went off and like really sought his purpose in life. And so he went off to move to Santa Monica. I'm in Denver, Colorado, and he moved to California and he started to get into, um, you know, things like Kabbalah, heart math, uh, meditation, like, like you name it, he chased it. And where he landed was he, he does a significant amount of heart math. So when COVID started, he put together this, gr this global group of people where three days a week, there were these heart math sessions that you could drop into that were an hour long each. And so I started to drop into them um, and we would do heart math for like five to 10 minutes at most. And then some of us would talk about experiences, people had lives in their jobs um, and they kind of went on their way. And it was a really kind of 
fertile, unique environment. And so I met people from all over the world, um, whether they were in Europe or South America or Asia, um, just struggling in their experience or trying to get perspective. And so this group um, really bonded. And out of that, um, I decided to go get certified in heart math. And coming out of, you know, kind of the finance and engineering world, um, I had done, you know, a lot of meditation. I'm an avid exerciser. Um, I'm 49 years old. Uh, you know, we, we travel a lot, we ski. And it, it, I, what I found from it is it's, it's just been a really good tool. Um, and every chance I get to talk about it, um, I enjoy doing so. So I, I, in so many ways, have no angle um, or agenda with this presentation other than to share with you guys um, what this is and, and kind of uh, help you walk away and be a little bit more curious about it. So I am going to share my screen. Look at this. This is going to work. Okay. Can you guys all see that? I can see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, they call, this is kind of an overview and HeartMath has phenomenal materials. So if you Google HeartMath, there's a wealth of information there with a lot of the things that I'm going to go over today. Um, there's a lot of science and data behind this and I want to share the high points of that, but I really want you to walk away with some pragmatic like things to chew on rather than debating, you know, algorithms, heart rate variability, um, how the amygdala uh, and the heart communicate, et cetera. But I'm happy to answer those questions as best I can. It can get um, a little bit technical. Um, so heart math is used by, you know, predominantly, I think it started with hospitals and health professionals and then military and special forces. And what, what, what why those professions started to use it was is that they had very chaotic, challenging circumstances where they did not have the ability nor the time to like sit down and meditate um, or, you know, like, hey, I need to just like kind of get my stuff together. Um, what HeartMath enabled them to do was by breathing and like really building a muscle and a pattern within the body to approach these things immediately. So as they trained and, and worked on HeartMath with like almost the snap of a finger or a single breath, they could get really focused. They could calm down their autonomic nervous system and they could go do what they needed to do. And now what we're seeing is more and more businesses, especially coming out of COVID, really seem to care more about their employees' experience. So, you know, even in the finance world, we've seen a shift of, you know, hey, you know, being out of the office, um, travel, um, how do we keep everyone kind of sane? Because there's a lot of things that have been challenging and stressful. You know, you, you worked in the office, you didn't, you had a job, you didn't. Um, industries have shifted. And so the, the, the heart math system is really starting to proliferate. And I think a lot of these things, um, you know, and I'm curious if you guys want to share, uh, the world seems more open to our general well-being. In the United States of America, you know, it has been about earnings per share and growth and multiples and doing the next thing. Um, and, and it was it hit me at a time where it just made a lot of sense to address this physically. Founded in 1991, and some of the things that I love about HeartMath is the data. Um, they have done a phenomenal job um, of pulling in independent bodies to review their data. Um, a lot of the studies that I love have done, been done by Harvard. I know there's some Penn affiliations here, um, but they really do do a good job um, of observing, doing double blind studies and validating these results. Um, the outcomes have um, been documented as well. And they have some really cool technology. And I, I, I have the kind of the basic technology that I use and I'll show you kind of like exactly how it works and show you my data here um, at the end. Um, some of the clients, so a lot of the data I'm gonna show next is um, some more metadata with some large sample sizes. Um, so not-for-profits uh, such as, you know, Kaiser's um, healthcare system, um, universities, you see some of the aerospace and defense um, with US Army, um, the Navy, Lockheed Martin, um, and now even professional services. Um, some of the friends that I went through the training with are now um, teaching professional service firms that do accounting, um, strategy consulting, um, finance. There's uh, uh, teachings going on in um, computer com uh, consumer product goods, CPG firms like Mars, Coca-Cola. Um, and then in the university and with children as well in particular. Um, 
So the solutions overview, the way that, you know, I, I kind of got introduced to this differently and we've been tinkering with how to get people engaged with this. And the way I try to approach it is just through general curiosity. Um, there's a lot of different trainings online where you could, you know, kind of go get just a taste. Um, one of the techniques, the technique that I'll show you today is called inner ease. Um, it's really simple. You might even look at it and go like, really, Rob, this is, this is, you know, this fundamentally changed your life. And I would say that um, I think it has. I think in addition to all the other things that I kind of do to maintain my energy and my experience, um, it has it has like kind of been the the glue or or the special sauce that kind of made the other things I do um, more significant in their impact. So, what is heart math? Why do you do it? Um, there will be two words that I use quite a bit. Um, the first is resilience. And what is resilience? And so the way we define it at HeartMath is it's the capacity to prepare for, recover from, and adapt in the face of stress, challenge, or adversity. Um, and you can learn to build your resistance capacity and to sustain your energy. Um, so like, you know, who wouldn't want to do that? And I think where it's made the greatest impact for me is it, it's not like, you know, I think what I struggled with like in meditation was I have a very busy mind um, and sometimes meditation is not the best tool for me to kind of like remain resilient, but with heart math and breathing um, and doing it kind of over and over, I can quickly kind of like before you get stressed or triggered before your body starts to just release a tremendous amount of cortisol um, from the adrenal glands, you can catch it and it, and it doesn't happen immediately, but it does happen over time. And so I know that there's many of us, you know, if you're a founder or you're, you know, you've got a big presentation or your kids are going bananas, you know, I have an 11 year old and a 15 year old. Um, there are moments where going into something, you know, I'll do some of these breathing techniques to just kind of get a hold of it. Um, the heart is a tremendous muscle um, and it puts off more energy than it takes in. And so our hearts are really resilient. And what heart math has also learned is that the heart communicates to the brain. And so, you know, we can go on uh, into this a little bit further um, in the deck of how all these biodynamics bio are working. And so like the, the amygdala in the brain is kind of like the traffic cop of just, you know, trying to keep you safe. It's doing a great job of like listening. It's like a spider in a web listening to things. And one of the main things that listens to is your heart rate and your heart rate variability. And in your heart rate variability, which is kind of the distance between each heartbeat, um, it's, li it's listening for stress. So if we in our experience can be more aware of when we're stressed with either conscious patterns or subconscious patterns, um, you can use some of the heart math tools to really drive more resilience because you're gonna get stressed, life is gonna happen. Um, and so you'll hear me talk about resilience quite a bit as we go through this. Um, so here, here, there's just a couple slides here um, that I think are important uh, to share. And this is from a number of heart math studies where it's with some of the companies that um, I witnessed earlier from like a metadata study. So the population here, big N is 5,600 people. And what we've seen, so the, the, the lighter blue line to the left um, was the baseline. And then the, the dark blue line was the shift or the change um, uh, before and six weeks after heart math training. Uh, and I for sure have experienced some of these similar changes. And for me, um, it was probably around um, being anxious and anxiety um, and tired versus exhausted. And I do feel a shift. I've been sleeping better. Um, and it's not that I don't get anxious, but I get anxious um, at a lesser degree. And I also, when I get anxious, I can bounce back to kind of a baseline um, more quickly. And there's a couple of slides that I'll, I'll show that um, kind of hammer that, that point home. Um, not only is there mental and emotional well being, but there's the physical symptoms as well. Um, so sleep, um, body aches and pains, um, and muscle tension. Um, I don't get a lot of headaches and I don't get um, heartburn. Um, but when your sleep's off and you're kind of like that cell phone that, you know, even when you charge it and then you pull it off and it just, the battery goes down again, 
that was something that I noticed that shifted in me as well. And it's pretty consistent with the population for those that um, practice heart math over um, at least a six week period of time. Um, I'm gonna skip through some of this stuff. Um, so any questions up to this point? Personal or, you know, I'm happy to answer anything about me. Um, so heart math takes the approach that basically we are energy systems and that we expand and renew energy. All right. And you can learn to build your resilience. There's that word again, your resilience capacity to sustain your energy. And so the way that they've, they've categorized this, and I think this is a really good um, slide that's less analytical, but intuitively makes sense. Um, so the domains of resilience are broken out as physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. And you might go, okay, you know, that, that seems pretty obvious. But then in the middle, um, they figured out a way to how to baseline and measure coherence in a, in a data way. Um, a question for the group, which domain do you think is potentially the most draining of the four? If you get it wrong, it's no big deal. I'll throw in emotional. Absolutely. Emotional. <laughs> and why do and why is that you think? Oh, it's the one that's most easiest to ruminate about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in the spirit of that rumination, um, kind of going back to the amygdala and the heart relationship. Um, and we all know this, um, but it's really difficult to do. And it's really hard for me. And like, you know, the journey is like, you know, ever life learning is that when, when you are presented with an event that is inherently stressful or chaotic, a lot of times the brain will feel that when your heart rate variability shifts and the brain will go, oh gosh, that feels like this. I'm gonna go grab this subconscious pattern and I'm gonna go exercise this, 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 this pattern or experience um, uh, for the brain and body, right? And if it's a negative one or a scary one or a fear one, right? If you if it if it activates the fight, flight, or freeze um, response, uh, your body will pump out cortisol. Um, and when that happens, there's about 1,400 chemicals, chemical reactions that happen in the body, and that is where our energy and the body start to really ramp up. And this is where this awareness training um, becomes really critical. Um, you know, not that these other ones aren't important, but emotional is one where if we can be aware of it um, and be cognitive of it, um, we can not necessarily trick the amygdala, but we can listen to the heart and by breathing, we can um, get, a, get a hold of um, the heart rate variability, calm ourselves down, um, focus on a renewing emotion versus a depleting emotion and kind of circumvent the brain from doing something that from a pattern standpoint, you might have been doing your whole life and learn it at a very young age. Um, this was all fascinating to me because what, what I asked in these meetings and I, and, and I was you know, raising my hand a lot and I have a hard time um, you know, questioning authority and, and wanting to know the why was you know, I asked like, well, if heart math is so dominant like this, couldn't you just like eliminate cognitive based therapy? Like if you could truly stop the amygdala from going and getting emotions um, that um, have been running your life for a long time and putting these renewing emotions instead to get a hold of your heart rate variability, like you could inherently change your complete experience as a human. Um, and they were like, no. Um, we don't promote that. We don't believe that. We believe that all these things are net additive and it kind of makes the things that you're already doing um, even better. Um, and, and I've felt and seen a lot of these, right? You know, your, your brain's a very powerful thing and there's a part of you and that kind of reptilian brain that it's going to try and keep you safe, especially when things get challenging or scary or triggering. Um, so here's... Um, um, one of the slides that is kind of like a pragmatic way of looking at this. Um, so, you know, husband and wife or partner are arguing, right? It, you know, we can, we can slip in any sort of pronoun here, all right? And it shows time um, on the bottom axis and then heart rate on the vertical axis. And something is said 
and you see the heart rate go up in beats per minute, right? It spikes up here, okay? And then afterwards, um, you know, right around here, let's say that they reconcile, right? It takes, they're in a, you know, five, 10, you know, 15, 20 minute fight. Um, this happens, right? I mean, this happens when you get cut off in traffic. It happens, um, you know, I have a thing when people bring food on airplanes um, and then they open the food up like, you know, 30 minutes into the flight and it's like a big greasy burger. Um, <laughs> it's for whatever reason that just like, that, that, that will do that to me. And like, um, um, it's like a, you know, a triggering event. Well, what, what's most fascinating about this is that even 15, 20 minutes after this, we're not back at the baseline, right? So there's all this energy that is still being expand, um, expended from an argument, right? Or an event. Um, and it's real. This is depleting you. This is the cortisol in effect and all the other chemicals that when, when you got presented with some chaos, um, something happened, your experience shifted, and though, even though the argument is done, your body is still having a physio physiological response to the event. Um, and with heart math, what we can do is we can reduce, because I, I couldn't find the slide that um, shows the, the counterbalance, but what happens is we can shorten the spike because there can be a spike, but what we really can do is get the baseline back to a core baseline more quickly rather than dragging this on over 15 minutes, an hour, or a day or two. Um, um, and, and, I, and, and I've experienced this, right? Like rather than the rumination that I think it was Mark brought up, um, we can shift back to a better baseline more quickly. Um, uh, you guys can't see all the bars here, but um, so what that really means is that from a performance response to sustained challenge, now it doesn't make you, you know, a terminator or a robot. Over time, there can be breakdown. But the performance level can you can expend and 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 inherently approach more challenging experiences over a long period time, um, so you don't reach breakdown or total exhaustion. And in a you know pandemic world, and you know, I, I think the one thing that I realized um, for myself of in the pandemic world is you know it wasn't necessarily. I wasn't necessarily afraid of COVID, but just like the ongoing sustainment of like things getting canceled and, you know, like I'm an extrovert. I, I like, I hate being on Zoom calls. It's really challenging for me. I love to interact with other people. Um, and so my performance level could get pulled out um, longer because of the heart math um, breathing techniques and, and, and doing this over a year period really really helped me feel uh, more confident, better sleep, and to address chaos. And what I've, what I've noticed is in that, create, in that moment, I'm, I'm also able to access um, different solutions um, in those moments of challenge rather than you know, snapping or being angry or not seeing an outcome that could otherwise be realized. Oh, here we go. I forgot this was a build slide. Um, so here you had the... Um, you know, issue happens, you can go longer over period, there's a hyper reactive stage where you start to deplete. Um, and then finally, there, there comes a breakdown. Um, are there any questions on this? I mean, a lot of this is intuitive, but I'm trying to blend the science in a little bit as we go along. Right. So with the heart math, we can now sustain it over a longer period of time. Um, rather than kind of hitting this breakdown moment more, more quickly where, you know, once you're tired or your adrenals are tapped out, we've all been there. That can lead to depression, prolonged anxiety, crappy sleep, um, and other things. And, and, and I have noticed this and I've probably taken more on. I mean, my challenge is probably saying no to things, um, but I do feel more resilient when I get into coherence. Okay. So let me move my, okay. So what is coherence? Coherence is an optimal state in which the heart, mind, and emotions are aligned and in sync. And physiologically, it's the immune, hormonal, and nervous system function in the state of energetic coordination. Does that make sense to everybody? It's really taking um, all of those, uh, all of these and measuring that. 
Okay, and HeartMath has done that. And I'm not gonna get into the algorithm of it, but I am gonna show you kind of how it works here in a second. Okay. So heart rate and also heart rate variability um, affect emotions and the heart rhythm. So when we're incoherent, right? Um, these are depleting experiences, which can be an emotion. So frustration, irritation, impatience, and worry. But when we're incoherence, right, especially um, how Mark was saying, I want to go back here to the emotional box, right, or the emotional bubble, um, that's where the rumination and, and um, fleeting and, and leaky energy can happen. So that's where you have your positive outlook and your self-regulation, but it has to do with your awareness, okay? So here we have someone that's in, um, in an incoherent state, it inhibits brain function, it impairs performance. Like, you know, intuitively, I think we all know this. Um, and where it really affects me is my creativity and like really my joy. So when you get into those ruminating or really dug in cycle, you know, like um, ingrained subconscious patterns, it can be really challenging to get out of them, especially when all the chemicals from cortisol have been flowing through the body. So there becomes a beg the question of like, how do, how do we get into coherence? Um, and there's different ways to do that. Um, and there's a lot of data here and in process that um, we don't have time to get into, but it's really taking some of these emotions that are renewing where they facilitate the brain function and promote more optimal experience. Um, and we all have, I think, you know, a handful of things that, and memories that you recall that just make you feel really good. Um, I won't put anyone on the spot here, but like two of the ones that make me feel really good are like puppies, right? Like I'm a grown 49 year old man, but like there's something about puppies and like, you know, having puppies and growing up as a kid that just calms me down. And the other one is, um, I really enjoy surfing and there's a moment like when I surf, when I'm out at sunset and I'm outside of the waves and if there's an, um, an offshore breeze, when the wind pushes the wave water and it's like you get a shower uh, of water on you when the wave goes under you and it, the wind blows the water onto you, it calms me down. So in this inner ease experience that we're gonna go over here in a second, um, these are some of the emotions that I use that whether I'm in line um, or I'm in a stressful meeting where with breath, I can really get a hold of this. I can shift my heart rate variability and my experience to get into coherence, to drive more resilience. Um, so that was a lot of words and a lot of logic build. Um, but if you have questions, please let me know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to, to go to move on here. Um, so the heart rhythms affect the physical and mental performance. We've gone over that. Incoherence inhibits brain function. We went over that on the last mm -hmm. slide. And then coherence facilitates better brain function. Um, so, what do people realize from this? We've gone over this. So an enhanced ability to maintain composure during challenges, um, social harmony, um, the ability to think clearly and find better solutions. I think that's one, especially as someone that's in a lot of meetings where we're dealing with numbers, people are argumentative. Um, when you're in that state, you can really limit solutions and outcomes. Um, and people feed off of that, you know, like, have you ever, I think we've all done this, but you know, when you walk into a room and they say that, you know, you could feel the tension, you could cut the tension with a knife uh, with the feeling in the air, that's it. I mean, that, that's like heart math at work. And they're working on ways to really me actually measure those things. Um, and that's where the room is generally out of coherence. Um, we felt that you felt it with a spouse or a partner um, you felt it with a friend. Um, I'm sure we've all been in meetings where, you know, this is just not going well and you can feel that tension. Okay. Um, there's a couple technologies um, that you can, you can actually purchase. And um, there's the M-Wave, which um, has a significant amount of technical capability. You can download these onto your phone um, or down to your desktop. The one that I use is called the Inner Bounce. Um, and I'll show it to you here in just a second. Um, but basically there's one that plugs into your phone um, like a charger and then you clip it to your earlobe. Um, and then you hit the HeartMath app and it'll measure your heart rate variability. It'll measure your heart rate. 
Um, and then it also gives you a coherence score. Um, and this is the tool that I use and it gives you data like for each time you do it, how long you do it, where your heart rate was and where you and how coherent you were or were not based on the algorithm. Um, all right, so we've got a few minutes left here and I want to go um, to right here. I want to do the technique and then I want to I want to get to Q&A. So this this only takes a couple minutes. So self-awareness, here's our little, you know, clip art guys, you've got low battery guy on the left, and then you've got, you know, the guy in the, or the, 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 the sexless person on the right in the full battery, right? Um, and this comes down to the self-awareness I was, I was speaking about earlier. Um, one of the most important steps in being able to stop energy drain to drive the resilience, resilience is to expand our awareness and identify unnecessary energy expenditures. So for me in particular, especially being a finance person, I can quickly look at numbers and be, and just, it can drain me, right? The numbers didn't come in the way we thought. Now the model's wrecked. And then my brain will then go into, I know all the hard work that needs to change this asset or this investment. And it can be, it can be really challenging to get out of that mode rather than, oh, whoa, 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 stop. Okay, this is a number, let's call a timeout um, and let's figure this out. Um, Another, like actually more like recent situation, I've got a 15 year old daughter and we've been working on driving and also, um, you know, she's about to turn 16 and she spends a lot of time with her friends and she didn't do, she was supposed to communicate where she was this weekend and she, and she didn't. And, and in our house, you gotta do that, especially over the phone with a text or a phone call so I know where she's at. Um, when you're with a group of people, um, you can actually shift the coherence of the room. And there's a lot of heart math data that shows that when you get into coherence and it drives your resilience. So we had, a, we had a short talk, but before I spoke with her, I did some of these breathing techniques to just say like, look, you know, you did these things. Um, I'm not angry, but I'm disappointed. And here's the fallout and the outcome, like you're gonna be grounded. Um, so taking like a really challenging thing, cause I don't wanna ground my daughter because I know she's gonna be upset and she's gonna cry because um, I'm taking her freedom away. But this was an area where she was like, okay, her reaction was actually super positive. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're parenting um, or I'm parenting, um, she's getting it. She doesn't like it, but there wasn't, there was like not a lot of story and drama. Um, okay, so what I wanna go through real quick here, I see we're 37 minutes after the hour because I do wanna um, go through this experience and then ask and address any questions. So um, this process is called the inner ease and it's one of the most simple processes and tools that HeartMath has. Um, we, I, you know, I use the inner ease to, you know, discern important issues and make better decisions. I did that with my daughter. Um, I was definitely angry that she did not reach out. Um, and then we had this finance meeting earlier this week where the same thing happened. And I, I, I caught myself before, you know, losing it um, in a way that would probably demotivate the team. We wouldn't find creative solutions, you know, kind of accepting what is from the kind of the Buddhist perspective. Um, and then it helped me stay poised. So here's what we're gonna do. So if everyone can, you know, put their phone down um, or uh, um, get off Instagram. Um, I know that that can be kind of my cheap, cheap, you know, hijack of the moment as well. And what I want you to do is just take a few seconds here, sit up straight. Um, you can leave your eyes open or close them, whatever feels comfortable. We're just gonna do this for a few minutes. And I want you to just focus your attention in the area of the heart, okay? Take a few seconds of just feeling in your body where your heart is and put all of your energy and in, in feeling in the area of the heart. Okay, and now that you've done that, I want you to pretend that the only place that you can breathe into and breathe out of is the area of your heart. And try to breathe in for as many as three, four, five seconds on the inhale in. And breathe out a little bit slower, try and match the exhale with the same length as the inhale or whatever rhythm is comfortable to you.
Let's do this for a couple more breaths. Really breathe into the heart. Pretend that's the only place the air can go. And then breathe out. The air, it's the only place the air can come from. Now draw in the feeling of an inner ease to balance your mental and emotional energy. So for me, that the one that I usually go to is surfing when I'm out in the water. And that for you may be, you know, hugging your significant other. It may be um, meditating. It may be an achievement you had. It may be something you did skiing or, or walking your dog. It could, you know, whatever comes to your mind. Draw in that emotion, that inner ease to balance your emotional and mental energy. Let's do a couple more breaths. Letting that feeling radiate in your chest and your heart and throughout your whole body. And now try and set a meaningful intent to anchor the feeling of that inner ease as you engage in your projects and challenges for the rest of the day. Really believe that you can anchor that feeling inside your chest and your experience, and that can be your state. And do two more breaths. Okay, now bring, if you closed your eyes, open them, bring your awareness back to wherever you are in the world. Okay, so just out of curiosity, did, um, if you're willing to share, did that, did anyone feel a shift in their experience when you did that? It's Mark again. And uh, for me, I feel a momentary um, shift, but uh, it's, it's a very difficult one to sustain. And so uh, that I think is one of my senses of, of challenge with, with it is just being able to hold on to that type of thing. For sure that you and me both. <laughs> um, especially in the middle of the day on a Zoom call where um, you've got somebody like me talking quick, but also like, let's drop into making connect all of our hearts. Um, how about anybody else? Yeah, I would say um, quite similar to Mark. Um, I've done these sorts of practices before and I, there's a reason it's called a practice. Um, it's something, it's great in the moment and um, it's, something you have to sort of maintain uh, almost on a daily basis, maybe even multiple times a day uh, for it to really kick in in those difficult situations. I've found at least my experience. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I think what I liked about it initially was, um, you know, someone who's, you know, I, I, I started doing transcendental meditation and then kind of shifted that. And, you know, I struggled with finding the time. And then even when I was doing it, like getting it like almost stressed me out more. But, um, you know, I started with three to five minute practices with heart math. 
Um, and then even like driving or in lines or something like it, it started to become kind of a cool thing. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, and, you know, the way that the Jedi like, you know, can breathe oh, themselves in yeah. really chaotic moments. Um, some of the lessons that we've heard from folks in the special forces, um, it's really incredible about what they have to challenge and face and where they can get their cognitive state um, using heart math techniques. And the same with doctors, um, uh, especially in the ER room. Um, so, you know, it's like life or death, right? It, 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 it you know, it, it, it's inspiring to know that um, there's these things that, you know, it's not gonna fix everything, but it can give you kind of some quick coherence into that. Um, anybody else have any quick commentary? Um, or questions or, or comments? Um, I'll share. Um, I felt that doing that exercise was actually like, it was a nice chance um, to kind of recenter myself. <clears throat> Cause I feel like um, just like in general in life, like sometimes I find myself running around and I feel like I could see myself like trying to practice this like midday or like just kind of take a breather and just like have a way to um, be re-energized and not feel um, just like the weight of the day kind of like building, but this is like a way to like kind of take a moment, just like, I don't know, focus and um, feel more at ease. So I, I, I think I benefited from that exercise. Um, it's a matter of keep, it, keep doing it, so yeah. Yeah, the, it, without like, you know, going through all the biology when, when you can get into that mode and um, there's, there's one particular kind of training piece, it would take much longer than we have left to discuss today, but um, where it goes over renewing or depleting emotions and what's going on in the autonomic nervous system and the heart, um, you can start to create your own experience. Um, it doesn't happen immediately, but it, you know, like for me, I was like, wait, so I can really shift and own this um, and in particular for me, um, around rumination, there's, you know, we've all got our ex past experiences or demons that were like trying to like work in this human world and it's made them lighter. Like it's actually made more, it hasn't made them go away, but it's enabled me to have more capacity for everything rather than that one emotion or that one part of me driving my entire experience. That's been really cool. And it almost gave me forgiveness or permission to like, Oh, if I only could figure this out, or if I could just get this, and it kind of became more like, you know what, like, this is a part of me and who I am. And like, I'm just going to like, not try and let it go, but like, it's a part of me, but it, it's not, doesn't have a monopoly on me. Um, so let me just show you this real quick. I'm going to stop this because I know we're getting short on time. Um, and for me, kind of the nerdy part of me. So um this is the earpiece um, and this is the inner bounce uh, thing. And feel free, I'll, uh, um, uh, Ali, I don't know if you can make sure everyone has my email. I'm happy to like follow up and answer any questions. It was actually oh, the yeah. last one that I didn't show, but um, it, it looks like a, you know, like an eye, you know, old earbuds. Um, but all you do is you put this into the phone and then that'll activate the app. Right, and then I put this. Um, so I'll do this sometimes when I'm like waiting at the airport. I, I tend to travel quite a bit um, and I'll, I'll do some of these experiences, but then the inner bounce will come on and it's this, let me just see if you guys can see this. Um, so there's this tool and um, um, there's these three screens. So the screen that I look at, I'm just gonna hit go here um, to get it going, but um, at the top, um, it'll show the coherence score, um, the length and the, um, the achievement, like it kind of makes it a little bit game, a game. And so if you've ever done brain mapping, you can like, you know, try and focus on these things to get like the deer to be colored, you know, like brown or purple. Um, and it's got applications like that as well. So the app is free. The ear thing I think is $159, it's, it's a little pricey. And then your, you know, your kids will step on them and you'll, you'll lose them when you travel. Um, but I, I keep this near my bed and near my office. And like, sometimes if I'm going to a call or something else, I'll do this. And so 
you can see my heart rate variability is kicking on now. Um, and the coherence score is the green, blue, red. And so I've raised the floor score. Um, and there's this, you know, kind of cool algorithm that they have to crank out the, the coherence score. Um, and you measure it. And so what I usually do is I try to do like three to five minutes a day. Um, I'm probably good at it th actually three to five times or th three to five times a week, three to five minutes a day. Um, and what I love about it is it's short and it's sweet and I do feel better. Um, and even if I don't get into coherence, I just kind of like, hey, like maybe today's not your day. Like, we'll just keep going. But what I noticed like this last week was I got the highest score I ever had. And I had to deal with kind of a real shit storm personally. And I was like, whoa, like this showed me something that like, you know, gosh, I'm doing really well. And so um, there's not this like fake it till you make it. It was like, gosh, this practice is really starting to materialize. And then the other thing I love, you're not going to be able to see this, but it tracks all my scores over time. Um, and still the hardest, the highest score I ever got legitimately was like, <laughs> like nine months ago when I was going through a super challenging time. I still can't figure out why the score was that high, but they will tell you like at HeartMath, if we did like the full, um, you know, big time training session, um, you know, don't make it a game. It's not about achieving a score, but like, I do like seeing that my trend has continued to go up and I generally do feel better. Um, and so I'll keep this group involved. We've talked about doing kind of like a free group where we would set up a couple times a week where you could just hop on and you can see like how we do it as a group and facilitate it. Um, you know, through the heart math community, like I've met like these people that used to work for Oprah, um, these other folks. Um, I was in Costa Rica and I, you know, I never would have thought that um, I was having dinner with five other women that were running um, a thing called FemQ, like global feminine intelligence. Um, and one of the things that they work on is heart math. And we happened to know somebody and ran into each other in this town. And there was like six of us that ended up having dinner talking about changing the coherence of the planet and like what it would actually take to do that. Um, so there's some really like bigger things at play with heart math, but to just make it pragmatic, you know, try inner ease, just try breathing into the heart um, see how that feels, go three minutes, go five minutes. Um, there's nothing you need to do, but like getting that regenerative emotion or feeling that makes you feel good can shift. And it's, you're really training your body and your brain to create kind of a new pattern, um, to create your own experience. So, um, again, like, I think I'm kind of like the atypical person that would have found this, but I love the data. Um, and even when we did this for about a year and a half during COVID, I mean, I saw a couple of people completely change their lives. Um, a woman's husband died from cancer. She worked through her alcoholism and drinking. Um, she's created a new business. Um, there's other folks that have um, completely rebranded themselves because they, um, their careers just went away. I mean, like just you're in and they had to rebrand themselves that way. And so um, I get it. Like, you know, I guess at the end of the day, like I really, care about other people. And, and like, when I get passionate about something, I just want to share it. And that was really my intention today. So hopefully you can walk away, be a little more curious. Um, feel free to email me. I'm, I'm an open book with my stuff. Um, and if you want more resources or other um, angles to get into heart math, I'm more than happy to speak to you or point you in the right direction. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, are there any questions? Um, oh, it's just one, can you just mention again the name of the app that you're using? Yeah, this is the inner, it's called, the tool is called the inner bounce. Um, so there's two, there's the M wave EM. Um, I like the inner bounce because it's simple. I'm like a technical rockhead. Um, so I just like things to be plugged in and know what I want. And this generally does that like 99% of the time. So it's I'm called the inner bounce. At this, so I'm gonna, I bought this one. It's probably a similar device. Yeah, I know. I know that one. Yeah, there's there's a lot of movement in heart rate variability right now. Um, okay. um, there's also the Healy device. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. 
and a couple others. And then the Apple Watch will measure heart rate variability as well. Um, I don't have that, but I've been thinking about getting it also for surfing though, because it'll measure the waves, um, but it has nothing to do with heart math. I guess mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with heart math. Um, but I like the inner balance just because it's it's easy and I can pack it up and I don't have to log into a computer. I, I prefer to do stuff on my phone. Okay, so the inner balance was the device and I'm, I apologize, I'm just writing things down now. That. Called, um, uh, hold on, I'll just plug it back in. The app is called Inner Balance. Okay. Okay, got it. So they're both inner balance. Yeah. And then I just have the, the pulse sensor. There's different. Sensors. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep trying. I also, I've looked back. I've, I bought this program back 20 years ago. Yeah. And does just never got, never was able yeah, to get it going. I tried too. this two years ago and wasn't able to get it to where it was giving me any benefit. So I just was curious how people are able to give it, are able to get benefit. I get benefit in the group experiences too. Like I, I prefer to hear the dialogue because yeah, um, I'm more of a observational and kinesthetic learner. Like I don't like love reading the books despite being a finance person, but, but the, um, I got as much from hearing other people, how they were feeling and doing. Um, and that's worked that worked really well for me. And then yeah. I could go and do my own practices. I needed, I don't do it a ton, right. I'm not like meditating for hours upon day. Like, um, I, you know, I was telling Tiffany that pr prior to COVID, I was working with Jack Cornfield and Tara Brock, who are kind of two well-known Western Buddhists. And we were exploring how to build a device, um, it, more of a community than a device, kind of like calm. Um, but what Tara and Jack were resolute on was that the community has everything it needs to like figure out everything on the planet, like their own experience, their own challenges, their own goals. And so it was this like really flat structure and that's what we were going to go and replicate digitally. Um, and they've continued to build out their communities like that as well. And heart math is kind of in the same neighborhood of that, you know, it's just a different angle in the human experience. It's just not meditation okay. and not one is better than the other. Good. I've ended up feeding the birds. That's been my kind of salvation and, uh, teaching the birds, the songbirds, how to come up to me and land on my hand and have used that as my uh, way. It's the reward is if you are centered, then the birds will land and come in. It's, a, it's an interesting, different type of feedback. That would be really cool to try. Um, there's a, uh, they have one example where um, they have two people in coherence and then they bring a third person that's out of coherence into a room. And then they do it with pets as well. And they find that pets can get into coherence quickly. And I, I, wow. I, can't, I can't tell you why, but maybe try, like it would be fascinating to, if you had that device on to check yeah. your heart rate variability while you feed the birds. Yeah, that, that's true. That's because the birds point. make them calm you. Oh, that's, oh <laughs> that, that's definitely there. That's definitely there. That's yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a diff it's a different motivator because you'll, I find myself, it is, uh, it's an extrinsic reward that leads to an intrinsic reward when you say, I'm going to keep my calm, myself calm for another 15 heart breaths. And then I just yeah. count 15 and then, uh, then just see what's happening. Oh, okay, let's try another 15 and see what's happening. And then, so it's a different a way of, uh, of centering. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it was Timothy Leary, um, who's not the best guy to quote always, but I think he said like surfing's like the most non-productive activity, but it's like, you're just, you're not even thinking, right? It's just like becoming one with the ocean and yeah. inherently like, there's no reason to do it other than like joy right. um, and you're not hurting anything. You're not doing anything. So like, I feel that way about surfing. Like it just, yeah. I just think, right. And then hours can go by and you're like, like physically exhausted going back. So I, like that inner, that those restoring emotions, whatever they are for the individual, when you can connect into those and regenerate them, that's, that's the goods. Right. Beautiful. Well, Ali, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm super happy. I was able to use zoom. My brother works for zoom <laughs> says it's even foolproof for me. Um, but I appreciate you making it easy for me. 
and tell um, Emily and Angela and Tiffany thank you as well. I hope um, yeah. feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any.